I'm fed up with changes. Come pick me up, cause I just wanna see the light. I wanna be weightless. Teach me to fly, I won't be counting. Could somebody wake me up? I don't wanna be in the middle of past me by. Yeah. I just see her face burn. Whenever I look, she's standing in the crowd. So I let go, let go. I don't you. want to, but I'm gonna try when well, she let me. Yeah, but a little okay. bit inside, I don't know, you know, maybe things are gonna <laughs> be alright. We're at. I'm so sick of waiting and getting too restless to be in this dusty town. I've heard of this place where people forget and you get another try. getting hot now. Greetings friends. Today is the day that I'm going to share with you something that I don't think I've shared with you before. A number of weeks ago, actually a little over eight weeks ago, we got ducklings, jumbo peking ducklings from Murray McMurray Hatchery. Brought them home, raised them in the brooder for a number of weeks, then transitioned them outside to the duck tractors where I moved them on to fresh grass each day. Well, not too long ago, we transitioned them into the Premier One electrified netting where they spent a number of weeks there. And yesterday, we had to gather some up for processing. Day. these chicken tractors here, duck tractors, but here in the past few weeks they've been roaming around out here in electrified netting. So, yeah, yeah. Try to give you a good life all the days that you've been here. And after we gather them up, we've spent a number of hours processing them and they just been chilling out overnight. Literally chilling out in the cooler. But today, we're gonna cook them up. And Lacey has a really good technique for cooking ducks that I really like. But the last time that we raised ducks, 
my brother-in-law Hazen smoked them and we all just absolutely love the smoked duck. So much so I was like, Hazen, I want some more smoked duck. He was like, sure, but this time we're gonna bring the smoker to your house so you can smoke them up. And that's what we're doing today. He just brought the smoker and now we're right here getting, burning the wood to get some coals for the smoker. We're gonna take this one. Cole, just go ahead and start transitioning them over. Yeah. We okay. want to get it to the, a good rule of thumb. Is, uh, like, like we, want, we want to do ducks faster than, than pork or beef. So. You can put your hand on it and you can count one, two, three, and take, and that's too much. Like okay. right at the three, it's like, ow. Gotcha. That's about right for pork. So it's like one, two count, and that'll be right for the duck. Okay, sounds good. So just set it on there, like one, two, and there. That's it. So we can figure out which direction it will go. Ooh, smoking. Just go ahead and, uh, it's gonna take us about 30, 40 minutes to get it up to temperature. Okay. So you can go ahead and throw more wood in there and let's burn, let's burn down it. We're gonna, we're gonna have to burn a lot of wood. Okay, I'll All keep right. bringing the wood. Put more coals around the outer perimeter. Okay. Cause you're gonna be, so you can tell how much hotter it is like right there. So. About five, six. So what we're doing right here is we're prepping the ducks to go on the smoker. Yesterday we forgot to take off the oil glands for most of these, so I'm just going through and then just cutting this tail off because sometimes I have issues with getting all the gland off. Just cutting it with the, uh, a knife. I think we're right at the temperature that Hazen said it should be at. It's like a two and a half, three second count. And then I gotta take my hand off of there. And that's exactly what he said for the ducks. I think he said two seconds. So it is definitely hot. So I think we can start putting the ducks on now. But what, over there, we're basically making our own coals. We're taking the wood, burning in it, making our coals, putting our coals in here to start smoking it. So it's like, it's a cooking process that you don't need electricity for. You don't need propane, so. My kind of way of cook. It's something I'm thinking about more and more of creating different ways that we can cook without those things. So uh, let's start bringing some ducks over. We're just gonna liberally salt these bad boys down on both sides. So we're just using salt to season these. So it's just gonna be salt and wood smoke. And one reason is we're gonna use these in different recipes and I don't want there to be a lot of competing flavors and you can use it for a bunch of stuff. So we're just doing salt and smoke. Ready to bring some ducks on over? Yes. All right. Right in the corner. Just add a little bit more coals in the back later. Okay. You don't want them touching each other, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want the meat to usually touch each other as then it won't cook as well. Okay. 
make sure they're safe that well. Turn it back. They're touching each other. Okay, right there. Gotta be five or six pounds. So as we're putting the ducks in, we're noticing that around the sides of the smoker and at the back, they're not as hot as in the middle. So I need to do a little bit better job of spreading out our coals. And we still have a number of ducks that we're going to put in here. We're basically going to fill this whole thing up. So I need to keep this process going, right? One of the things that I'm noticing right away is this definitely is more work to cook like this, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Let me explain. One is that we're not just making one meal right here. We're making multiple meals, 20 meals. And each duck can just be, once it's cooked, it can be reheated to use at another time. And two, this style of cooking is bringing, will bring out the flavors and, and it's going to be a much more better experience, a much better experience eating the ducks this way. So we're really capturing and really making the best use that we can of these animals that we have grown. And uh, we're also reusing wood from trees that we've cut down to cook, to help prepare the coals that will cook these birds. So, and, and those coals will turn into, and all that will turn into ashes, which will go into the soil, which will also nourish the soil. So it's also, we're also using methods that complement not just us, but also the environment. When you go and push the button on the microwave, you're not getting all that, all of that that I just talked about. Yes, it's less, a lot less work to just push those buttons on the microwave, but you're missing out on these other things. So, something to think about. All right, we got some more ducks ready? Yep, this is the last of them. All right, bring them on. Okay. It might be a little cruel that we're cooking these ducks right beside our chickens here. <laughs> but let it go to a warning to you guys. Ladies, keep paying rent. Are you going in the smoker? I'll smoke you. <laughs> I didn't plan that out. We just happened to set up the smoker right here, right beside the chickens. But there are a number here that are getting to be where they're not really laying much anymore. So we'll just have to see what happens. These are the last two. So we're gathering our mostly hardwoods here. And these hardwoods, like oak, are gonna burn much hotter and make much better wood for smoking our duck. One of the biggest differences that I've found between chickens and ducks is ducks have a lot more fat and they actually run a higher body temperature than um, other birds so they don't get sick as often and uh, I remember when we first started having chickens and ducks down here I thought our duck was gonna get too cold and um, so we brought our duck home in the truck <laughs> to our uh, house in the city and then we started learning more and like no if anything's going to be good in the cold it's actually going to be ducks so we're going to put this on the smoker Ooh, see those starting to cook and brown a little bit there we 
go. We got a full smoker. Maximizing this thing. That's right. Max it out. I don't know about you, but cooking like this reminds me of how people used to do it back in the day. And I believe there's many tribes and cultures that uh, they used to keep a fire going always, pretty much every single day, and just kind of adding to it so that way they could cook because they're constantly cooking things. Well, yeah. Plus, they didn't have matches either or as easy to ignite a fire as it is now. So, you know, you would want to keep it going so you have a fire burning all the time. So it wasn't just for keeping them themselves warm, warm during colder temperatures, but it was also so that way they could continue to cook each and every day. Okay, Mike, when you're running a, a smoker that's running natural coals or wood, it's important, I have found that it's important to leave the, the stacks all the way open so you have the velocity of the smoke coming through there. You're much less likely to have particulate matter just deposit itself on the wet meat because then it just kind of clings and gets icky and while bark is nice too much that it, we've all had meat that had that kind of acrid icky taste and it seems to be from too much particulate falling onto the meat uh, and really we can attribute that thought process to Aaron Franklin because he, he talks about it a lot whenever he's talking about how he smokes stuff and since he seems to be one of the best ones out there he's a good guy to follow here we go listen to those who do well <laughs> that's it that's it listen to the best wisdom instead of experience Hazen I must admit as I'm doing this I find it very therapeutic it's something that's it requires you to work at a slower pace and focus on where I am and not be all over the place and I'm really liking it did, did you find that same benefit when you're using a smoker and tasks like this I find the same thing it's like you know you in most of everyday American life, especially if you're a business owner or a homesteader, you're you're distracted, you're moving around place to place, you're doing all these things, you, you get that kind of sense of anxiety, like you're not doing enough, you're not doing it well enough, and that it, it just can be overwhelming uh, for me. So I found that this is very therapeutic that because I, the only thing I can control is whether I, I've, the meat's prepared, it's put on the smoker, the fire's only going to burn so hot. I'm only going to get coals so fast. The only thing I can really do is mess up the quality of meat because if I push it at the American standard trying to get it done faster, it's going to mess up my product. So I have to step back, take a breath, do a good job. And it's one of those rare times that you have to just get in some of that little bit of self-talk, a little bit of therapy. Yeah. Uh, I, find, I find cuisine and smoking meat slowly very therapeutic. I think our culture needs more and more of this kind of thing because it's like we're just so go, 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 go and everybody's just high strung with anxiety and stress and uh, it was one of the things that I noticed when I came out of the fitness industry of just client after client, back to back to back to back, high strung music all the time. It was just like you're just so high wired and then we get home and we're kind of the same way but we need more things like this. Definitely. We <laughs> just don't have anything in the tank sometimes so it's a, a little bit of time for yourself or making something for others is, is very therapeutic. Yeah. It look good, Mike. See, there's that, that ash I was talking about. I got a little bit on there. Yeah. They look pretty. Smell pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're doing great as your as your first time as pit master. <laughs> Just keep it going. All right, just keep managing the heat. Yep.
manage heat just like that and it's not too hot now i'd say keep it right about here and uh, don't let it get any hotter though here or below one two three yeah that's about it one two oh that's hot so here we go cool man don't touch it it's pretty hot you ready to eat some duck <laughs> um yummy yummy put it in your tummy <laughs> so Ace, and i bet somebody out there is wondering why are we cooking with the coals and not just directly cooking with the wood? Well, what we're, the reason why is because we want an indirect heat. And if we're cooking directly with wood that's on fire, then we're gonna have too much, too much concentrated heat. It's not as easy to spread it around. If we had fire across the entire bottom of this porta pit, it would, have, it would just be too hard to control. Way too much heat at one time. And also not as good a quality smoke. So, what we're doing now is we're replicating the old way of building a block pit or a stone pit and cooking slow over coals. We're just doing it in a 250 gallon oil drum in the, in the modern style, more modern style. Um, the way that they handle this with the Texas style offset pits is they actually have a firebox to the side. They burn the wood there and then they're just drawing the hot gas and smoke through the chamber. So they just remove all combustion from the meat compartment. That's the other way to address it. But uh, that, that's why we're doing this like this today. There you go, for those of you who are wondering. All right, so I think we're at the point now where it's just, we just play the weight game. Just sit back and relax and let the smoker do what the smoker needs to do because we've added all the coals and the temperature's at a good temperature and we're not that far away, but I can just hear the sounds of the meat the sizzling in there, just cooking, and then I can smell it, and it just smells so good, and my mouth is just watering. I want to eat some of the meat because it just sounds and smells like it's good, and I'm ready for it, but just a little bit longer. So I'm just going to hang back here, just relax a little bit, which is not something I normally get to do, but I'll do it now. Just wait for the meat to finish. <laughs> So let's see if these ducks are finished. It's right at time. Oh yeah. That's the numbers we want to see. 166. There we go. Tonight we're gonna eat one of the ducks. We're also gonna go ahead and bring in this chicken that Lacey made here too. So. Looking forward to it. I guess technically I made it since I was out here cooking this time. But usually you're, she's the one that makes all the dinners. I put it on the grill <laughs> for you and did everything before. So all you did was sit here and let it smoke, which I do appreciate because you kept the fire going. But it was a team effort. That's right, team effort. Look at that juiciness. All of them look really good. <laughs> 